It is the year 1995. We observe two people from floor level until they go into a room. Another room shows a mess of Lego pieces. After that, we see the quiet emptiness of several rooms at night, changing from one to another. Eventually, a boy sits in a corridor with a nightlight near him. A closet door opens, with some items falling out. We hear a child ask if someone else is hiding. Then the child starts counting. When a child begins to cry, the lights get turned on. So far, we are introduced to a house that offers almost no activities and zero understanding as to what is to be expected. We pan down to a turned-on television. However, only a white screen is on display. It turns off abruptly, causing the view to shift to the right before the lights turn on. Someone whispers the name Kaylee. Shortly after, someone dials a phone. A man talks on it, saying that Kevin fell downstairs, hitting his head in the process. Following that, the lights turn on somewhere, and a child walks into view but only by their lower body. That child calls out to their father before calling out to Kevin. At that point, we see the other child come out, who is possibly Kevin. Something bizarre occurs in a short while. A window appears for a few seconds only to disappear. One child asks where it went before calling out to their dad again. Next, we see a door appear and disappear, just like the window. One of the children tries using the phone but later hangs up. They seem to resort to watching a videotape on the television. As they watch it, Kaylee expresses her love to Kevin. He does the same for her. We also get to see that they are watching a cartoon. Soon enough, Kaylee tells her brother she will go upstairs to get some things. While she is searching in her room, the nightlight is removed. She calls out to her dad again, but he is not there to answer her. Kaylee puts the nightlight back in the socket. We watch it working until it suddenly stops. Later, the children draw with crayons near the TV. When they notice a light has turned off, they try to turn it back on. But it does not work, so they go back to drawing. Kaylee whispers, asking why their mom is crying, and Kevin wonders why no one has come yet. Kaylee does not know. Then they hear banging from above. Kevin questions what that was. In a short time, we observe a chair standing upside down on the ceiling. Kaylee states they should be quiet. Her brother asks where she thinks their father is. The girl does not know the answer to that. Kevin thinks he went with their mom. Yet for some reason, Kaylee tells him she does not want to talk about it. Afterward, the lights turn on. Kevin calls his sister, because there is something he wants her to see. We witness the toilet vanish, making the boy ask where it went. Shortly after, they see something fall from a wall. As their view goes higher, they observe a doll stuck to the ceiling. One of them drops the flashlight out of fear. Subsequently, the missing toilet gets replaced with a bucket. Kaylee asks Kevin if he saw anything weird upstairs. They continue watching the cartoon while she asks this. Another room shows us a rather sophisticated construction from Lego blocks, though we soon see a mess of toys on the floor. After that, Kaylee stands alone in the dark. A voice tells her to come upstairs, so we see her walking from our point of view until she enters a room. In there, she calls out to her dad again. He is there, telling her to look under the bed. She does it to see there is nothing there and tells him she can't see anything. So she looks again to witness more darkness. But when she stands back up, Kaylee sees someone sitting on the other side of the bed. In addition, Kaylee appears to occupy another area of the bed, and her father is no longer there. The person who sits there is her mom, who calls Kaylee's name. She starts talking, and at that moment, something slams. Some time passes before she says what she wanted to say. Once she does, she says that they love Kaylee and Kevin very much. Now she needs Kaylee to close her eyes. The girl does as her mom desires. She opens them to see she has vanished. Then she hears sounds, which make her look to the right. A voice tells her someone is there. Kaylee's name also gets stated. At that point, her mother tells her to go back downstairs. After Kaylee stares at a wall for some time, the scene abruptly shifts to show the couch downstairs. Kaylee returns to Kevin, who asks her where she went. She wants him to help her move the couch. Later, they turn on the flashlight, pointing it at the ceiling. We see the Lego construction again. During that time, Kevin says he got her some juice. He also asks her what happened upstairs. After a while, Kaylee's name gets called again. Then Kevin calls out to her. She doesn't answer, so he starts watching the cartoon again. We see another Lego construction near the television. A stuffed animal soon falls near the set, and Lego pieces slowly start getting taken by someone or something we do not see. Even the stuffed toy gets taken. We observe that many items are stuck to a particular wall. The stuffed toy is among them. Shortly after, a voice tells Kevin to go to the basement, so he goes there. Once he's there, his name gets called two times. Someone also tells him they are scared. There in the basement, we see someone sitting without eyes or a mouth. In their place, it is just skin. Following that, someone runs. It is probably Kevin. On the television, we see the cartoon character opening many doors. After he opens one door, another one is there to stand in his way. This process continues, disallowing him to venture further. Perhaps this cartoon is symbolizing the situation the children are facing. They are unable to make sense of what is going on. Kevin's name gets called again. He says hello to the voice. Then the voice just says the word, sleep. The TV flickers, while we see the mess surrounding it. After a moment of flickering, it returns to the cartoon. We zoom in on the stuffed animal on the floor. Soon enough, the TV stops. It does not return to operation until some seconds have passed. When it does return, it repeats a certain segment of the cartoon many times. Suddenly, the toy vanishes and the television stops again. 
As our view is limited to the ceiling, we hear the cartoon again. On the floor, more items get mysteriously taken. But more bizarre than that is the abrupt return of the Lego pieces. They get pushed back into view in a clumsy, hasty manner. A voice says it wants to play. We hear Lego pieces getting moved around loudly. The voice says it wants to play again. After that, a drawer opens unexpectedly. We see the cartoon continues to repeat itself in the same segment. Then the TV stops. While Kevin sits on the floor, his name gets called again. Once the TV turns on again, the voice tells someone to put a knife in their eye. That is followed by screaming coming from somewhere. The voice says to wake up. Afterward, the television sound starts distorting until the device stops altogether. At that moment, Kevin is heard being scared. Different areas of the house are shown to us being dark, empty, and silent. Without seeing who, we hear someone walk through the toys. The back of Kaylee's head is displayed next. Someone turns on the flashlight, and the phone starts making a sound. It gets taken for someone to dial. An operator from 911 asks what the emergency. Kevin says he while now feeling sick. The operator asks if anyone else is in the house, to which the boy says there isn't. He wants to know how Kevin is hurt. The child tells him, but we do not hear it. The operator just repeats back to him that he got cut with a knife in the form of a question. He follows by asking if Kevin is bleeding, in addition to how old he is. Kevin says he is four years old. At that point, the operator wants him to be brave. Kevin has to stay on the phone with him. He asks if his parents are home, to which Kevin gives a negative. The operator tells him to keep talking until they send for someone to arrive. He also asks Kevin why he is whispering. He wants to know if someone else is in the room. The boy's answer is not heard. When asked where he is in the house, Kevin answers he is downstairs, but the doors are gone. The operator seems confused by that, and he tells him to stay on the phone. However, Kevin does not listen to that last statement. He drops the phone, going elsewhere. He points his flashlight at a toy, telling someone that they did that. In a short time, horrific laughter is heard coming from a distance. Kevin sits, looking to his right. He asks someone out of view how they did something. The voice tells him it can do anything. It also tells him Kaylee did not do as she was told. She wanted to see her parents, so it took the way. Now the voice tells him to go upstairs. This makes the boy turn his flashlight on before going up. When he gets scared, the voice tells him it is okay, it will protect him. As Kevin continues walking, he suddenly appears standing on the ceiling. He walks to open a door while being upside down. Past it, in the darkness, it seems like he is floating away from a door. His flashlight gives a faint indication of this. He asks if he can go back now, but does not get an answer. Odd, terrifying moans are heard in the distance. Soon we see him appear elsewhere, where he is still upside down, among the rubble. There is a counter there that displays 572 days. Yet we are not informed as to what the days refer to. Following that, the cartoon is heard coming back on, and the view starts slowly moving back. Eventually, Kevin becomes unrealistically removed from his starting position. It is unrealistic because the house does not stretch that far. The next scene has Kaylee sitting with her back toward us. She starts fading until she fades away completely. Then we see upside down again, where the television displays static. After that, we observe the house from a large distance. Blue light emanates from it dozens of feet into the sky. Back in the house, Kevin turns his flashlight on and off to look into a room. He shines it on the toy phone. Once he does, it starts ringing while its face distorts. Later, Kevin hears whispers, and a strange doll is presented with a deformed face. More such dolls get presented afterward. In the next scene, blood sprays on the carpet. It vanishes in a few seconds, only to come back again. This repeats a few more times until a voice says mommy. Subsequently, we approach a TV. A voice asks if they can watch something happy. Then our view travels toward an isolated door. Beyond it, a face is barely visible in the ambient darkness. It says to go to sleep, and also asks the name of the one who approached it. Perhaps it asks this of Kevin. After asking again, the film just ends. It is highly uncertain what happened to the children or even the parents.